be prepared to be bitten by the scent that is tuberose. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here we talk about perfume, but we just don't talk about perfumes that are every day. And especially, we don't talk about PR. I'm not one of those channels that brings PR into it. No, I don't do that. I am my own voice, so nothing Anything that's sent to me is rejected. That's how I am. And that's how I roll. So if that's you, then keep on watching. So in today's video, we're talking about gothic tuberose scents. My 10 favourite tuberose gothic scents. What are yours? Let's just jump into it. By the way, these are all absolutely stunning tuberose scents but the first one i'm going to talk about could be you might think oh really i'm not sure about that i've got three honorable mentions in this but the first one i'm going to talk about because that's the end i like to keep you tantalized i like i like to keep your taste buds salivating the first one though we're going to talk about I was about to say Fairyland, Fairy Dust by Paris Hilton, which you might think, oh my gosh, really? Paris Hilton? Tuberose? Gothic? Oh, yes. This could be, some could even say old grandma floral. I don't care. I say, who cares? If you're an old grandma, if you're a gothic grandma, give us a thumbs up. Love to hear you. Love to hear you talking in the comments down below. This is a tuberose forward scent. This has gardenia in as well, but it is nonetheless a tuberose scent that packs a punch. That all of these pack a punch. All of these are in your face. All of these are quite edgy and different. I think anyway. And this is for a celebrity scent, which you can still get, which is still barely affordable, although it's been discontinued. Um, yeah. So if you love Fairy Dust by Paris Hilton, give us a thumbs up. The next one I'm going to talk about is completely different to that. It's more of an incense spicy tuberose, and several of these are spicy and on steroids, and shouting from the rooftops, and creating, I was about to say a word then, but I won't, so I'll give the, I'll give the game away of the last scent that I'll talk about. In this one, though, is the original Poison by Dior. Yes, this is a spicy tuberose scent, I feel, backed up by incense. I could have had Lulu in here, but I chose this because I think this, I think the tuberose in this is more prominent, whereas in Lulu, the incense is more prominent. This has great longevity, great sillage, will fill a room. People will know you're wearing it. Everyone was wearing it from 1985 onwards, even in the 90s and the 2000s. This bottle is from the early 2000s. I remember wearing this on a Boat cruise to the Isle of Wight, a party cruise, thinking I was the bee's knees. Yeah, Poison by Dior. If you love it, again, comment down below. The third one I'm going to talk about is a classic 80s. Again, it's one Elvira would wear. It is none other than Giorgio Beverly Hills. Yes, it's glam, glamorous. You know, if Alexis Carrington was glammed up and gothic, she would wear this. You know, no hate, please. If you think, oh my God, Joan Collins, Alexis Carrington, gothed up. Yes, darling, she would wear this. Um, it's bold. It's audacious. It's bold lip, bold eyeliner, slicked back hair just giving a 
you know, you just want to feel yourself wearing this. Well, anyway, back to the back to this. Elvira would wear this, I feel. This in another scent. She would wear all of these, actually. Actually, Elvira would. This is Georgia Beverly Hills, and I love it. It's an old classic, but I still love it. Now, the next one, you could layer over any other fragrances that maybe do not have the scent of tuberose. And this is affordable, although I think it's hard to find. This is by Monotherm, Venezia, just tuberose itself. This, I've spoken about this before, it is a tuberose scent that is not as animalic as the others, as some of as the previous two in particular that I've talked about. But this you could layer with other scent. It has good projection and longevity on this, especially on my skin as well. Um, on clothes, it lasts forever. And I just feel if Bette Davis was gothed up, she would be wearing this. Yeah, I said it. If Bette Davis was in All About Eve, gothed up, she would be wearing tuberose by Monotherm Venezia. Or she could be wearing this next one, but I don't know. I feel this next one, a 90s emo goth would wear. It is Michael Kors by Michael Kors. The only thing is this spray is hideous. It doesn't spray properly and it leaks a little bit. And I procured this from eBay a while ago. So I just really had this as a collection as a as a go-to kind of scent although i have worn it i've sprayed a little bit on my hand earlier and it it's strong it's a realistic green tuberose with the stems with the buds with everything blooming and it's quite indolic it's very in your face some people would say maybe it's a bit screechy i don't care it's gothic it's dark it's alluring it's mysterious and I want to rock it. The next one I'm going to talk about is probably maybe out of all of these, I mean, none of these are really safe blind buys, but this one could be described as quite scratchy, as in the sense it is quite, oh, it could be a scrubber for some. Not for me. It is Tuberous Criminal by Serge Luton's. For some, it would be a scrubber, but I would feel a scrub. I would feel like I am a scrubber wearing this. Yes, I said it. Yeah. This is magenta licking at Rocky's feet. Not Rocky. Um, who's the guy? Tim Curry. She would be licking at his feet wearing this. Oh, yeah. I've just got that image in my head now. This is tuberose that is fueled with power and gasoline and it's got mighty strength to it it's it's bold again audacious it's not a crowd pleaser um i don't think i could actually wear this in the summer and you know me i'm not a seasonal perfume wearer this is for autumn and winter this is for when you want to make a statement yeah tuberous criminal by Serge Lutons. The next one I'm going to talk about is a dupe of Frank Boclet cocaine. Cocaine. It's addictive. It is French name by the perfume parlor, which is a dupe for that, for Frank Boclet cocaine. Cocaine. This is fairly sweet in the beginning, but as it dries down, the tuberose is prominent and and I like a realistic tuberose. This is maybe out of all of the scents I've got, maybe not the most realistic tuberose. It's a sugared tuberose slightly, slightly. Um, so if you want a slight sugared tuberose, uh, Frank Boclet cocaine, if you want to buy that one, but if you don't want to pay the money and, and you want a really good dupe and one that lasts the distance, French name. This I've, spoken about is if I if it could be a character it would be Jane Birkin in, in Evil Under the Sun, the Agatha Christie film. It would be her. It would it would be she would be portrayed as the withered woman that is 
Oh, poor, but she's not at all. She's she's walking down those stairs, wearing this, tilting her Freddie Fox hat or whatever hat she was wearing. And yeah, people were like doing a double take. She would be wearing this. Yep. So that's that one. The next one I'm going to talk about, the last three I'm going to talk about, I think are honorary mentions. And two, I've been added to my collection. The first one I'm going to talk about is Dominique Ropion's Carnal Flower by F Frederick Mel. This is a bit of melon and coconut, and I've always loved this tuberose scent. Always loved it. It could be quite austere for some. It could be quite almost if you're if you want to live in stealth mode. You know, if you want to just you know be bold, but you're quiet. Um. I imagine um, the Devil Wears Prada, Meryl Streep kind of wearing this kind of scent, saying to Emily, that's all florals. How innovative. Yes, she would be for spring. Yes, she would be saying that, you know, This is for the person that demands attention, but demands respect and gets respect. This is for the person that has a, a bold feel to them. And they're audacious, but you're, you're almost frightened of them, but you're in awe of them. Yeah. So this is one of my signature scents. Although I don't wear a signature, I would wear this all year round. This is not really carnal. It's, it's the tuberose stem. It's, again, like the Michael Kors one. It's, I think it's better than Michael Kors myself. Um, that's just my opinion. But I think it's, it's indolic, slightly indolic, but it's backed up with a little bit of sweetness from the coconut and the melon. But they're not, they're just a supporting role, whereas the tuberose is the main role carnal flower. Now the last two I'm going to talk about are two recent ones that I've added to my collection and I'll tell you why. Um, you know me, I've always loved tuberose. It's my one time, it's my all time favourite white floral. Now this next one could be a safe blind buy for some and I feel it, either, it even trumps the original one. It's a flanker of, yeah I said it, it's a flanker of Givenchy, Lanterdi, it is tuberose noir, black tuberose. Yeah, hence gothic black. But it's supported by this, it's tuberose from the beginning to the end, but it's supported by this roasted coffee note. But it's just a supporting role, it's the, the, the coffee note. And I don't like really coffee, but this adds smokiness and depth. And it feels almost complex. It feels almost niche. Now, I don't like saying that word niche, but in the sense, it's not like other designer scents. It's not generic or, you know, sugary, things like that. This is far from it, in my opinion. Um, on me, the tuberose is there, but it's this smokiness that is beautiful. And actually, my dad, when I wore this, he did say to me, he said, that smell is something I've never smelt before. And for my dad to say that, and he complimented me, and I loved it. I'm glad I've got it. And, yeah, I won't be without it. It trumps the original Lanteddy by Givenchy, which is more maybe a sweeter tuberose. This is more of a smoky tuberose. You could wear this daytime, nighttime, any season. I don't care. And finally, the last one I'm going to talk about is... Um, one that I was on the shelf about, I, I wasn't sure, but two content creators, yes, I'm blaming <coughs> you, <coughs> Veronica says, and <coughs> Tammy <coughs> loves <coughs> fragrance, yes. Those two content creators here on um, Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, Fracker by Robert Piguet. Yes, Fracker means noisy, disturbance. This certainly makes a disturbance. I got a sample and I really liked it. But if anything, I thought, do I really 
need it but i was uh, craving it and craving it yes yeah, so i was craving it <sighs> this is this is a buttery tuberose this is almost like tuberose dipped in butter which is almost rancid yes that sounds horrible but on skin it shines and it 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 plays with the senses this has got other things in it but you know me i don't really go on lots of other notes i go on feelings and and situations and stories and characters and who could this be this could Which probably be or not but i i think of joan crawford she's one of my icons she really is i could just imagine her wearing this in um straight jacket yeah have you seen the film straight jacket with the bracelets jangling oh i love that film yeah she was that film she, she was sent to a lunatic asylum yeah she was that character um for killing her husband yes fracker this is that gothic scent but you know she was wearing that jangly tacky jewelry yeah that's her in a bottle yeah joan crawford fracker by robert piguet this is tuberose on steroids that is the <laughs> it's not going to trump carnal flower but it's up there with carnal flower it is one of those scents one of those tuberose scents that you've got to love tuberose not the tuberose scents that is in like my way or even lanta d the original by givenchy it's very different to that it's my kind of tuberose so those are 10 gothic feel favorite tuberose scents of mine that i love what are yours comment Down you've been watching road. another edition of the fragrantition thank you for the love that you've given over the last few months i really appreciate it hence coming back into the journey of my youtube is why i'm here and why i love doing it so as alvira would say until next time unpleasant dreams Thank you.